Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very honored to be given the opportunity to set the scene for this trade session. Um, so first of all, what does today's world look like? Well, we can see that we have a higher degree of specialization than ever before. We have a world marked by global value chains, which means that products cross borders many times before they read, uh, reach the end consumer. And this also means bye-bye to mercantilism, where export is good and import is bad. Now, we also really have to pay attention to, to um, uh, the flows both ways um, and make sure that um, we get the imports we need. Uh, I have a figure for you. 80% of the import used in, is used in production of other goods and services today in the European Union. We also see uh, a higher degree of servicification of the economy. That means that services are of growing importance, including digital services. And we also see that goods and services are more often sold together in a package, which also has implications for mobility of high-skilled persons across borders. So that also means that future trade agreements have to take all these new realities into account when they are negotiated. So we have to focus more in the future on services, uh, on digital trade and on mobility. And as all previous speakers have pointed out, we have to make sure that trade agreements um, work for, for SMEs, because for small and medium-sized companies, we know that non-tariff barriers are, are, are more of an obstacle than for, for larger companies. Another feature, 90% um, of global growth is expected to happen outside Europe in the future. But since the EU is the biggest trader in the world, we are also well-placed um, to negotiate good trade agreements. Um, one of our latest agreements is the, of a modern kind is the one we negotiated with Korea and that has been into force now for more than five years. And it has shown that our, our exports to Korea during this time has increased by 55%. So we need more of this kind. Um, we have an even better agreement waiting to be implemented now, and it's the CETA, uh, the Canada Agreement. Um, I, I certainly hope that it will be uh, signed and provisionally applied without any further delay, because it's to date the best agreement we have ever negotiated, a very progressive one that opens markets and sets new rules in a very positive way. Of course, uh, TTIP negotiations are of, of uh, big importance, both economically and strategically, as we hope that we, together with another big player, will be able to set rules that could also hopefully become global rules. As the Americans themselves like to point out, either you're a standard taker or you're a standard maker, and of course we should be standard makers. Um, but I would like to point out that uh, these are not the only negotiations in town. Uh, the European Commission is currently involved in actually more than 20 negotiations at very uh, different stages of, of um, ripeness, involving more than 60 countries. Uh, so there is very much on our agenda. Actually, the European Union has the most ambitious agenda in the world, I think, if you look at what we are doing, both bilaterally, plurilaterally, and multilaterally. Uh, and let me take the opportunity to point out that, at heart, we are really truly multilateralists, especially in a world marked by global value chains. It makes sense to have global rules that practically all countries follow. So the WTO really is a cornerstone in our policy. But it's not enough to just negotiate great agreements. We have to make sure that they are properly implemented afterwards, that they really deliver the results that consumers and businesses and workers expect. Um, for example, I think it's scary to note that one year after the Korea agreement had entered into force, 60% of companies continued to pay duties that we had eliminated. I mean, what a waste. Um, so therefore, we have to pay more attention in the future on raising awareness for the new opportunities that we have negotiated. Um, and we are very happy to work more with member states and with chambers uh, in realizing this goal. And then finally, um, I think we have to put a bit more effort into rebuilding trust for trade policy. Trade has become strangely controversial and we have to do a better job of explaining what we are doing. One way of doing it is to increase transparency, which we have done to a large degree since Commissioner Malmström uh, entered uh, office. 
uh, I think it's absolutely necessary that we are able to show people during the negotiations what we are trying to achieve or, or also not achieve, because there are many scare stories out there that are also not true. Um, I also think that these days, when negotiations are about so much more than just cutting tariffs, um, they, are, they are complex negotiations, they take a long time. We can't sit in a, in a, like in a black box or in a, in a hideaway in a room for several years and then just come up and say, ta-da, please vote yes. So therefore, it is important to have these discussions uh, ongoing, even if it's complicated and we cannot reveal everything uh, during the negotiations. Uh, at least, uh, I think it's important to, to be as open as possible. And also to, to better explain that trade is not a zero-sum game. If I should say something criti tr critical about the little movie that we just saw before I, I, I took the floor here, it's not like playing chess when one person wins and the other loses and the best you can, ex or, or maybe you end up in a Remy situation. Here, both parties can win. Uh, so I think maybe you have to find another game here to illustrate uh, when you make the next movie. Um, we also have to explain, I think, to people that we are in favor of an open market, uh, free flow of goods, uh, free trade agreements, but of course we are also want a level playing field. And we are ready from the Commission side to use trade defense instruments when so justified. Uh, and we are currently working on, on proposals that will give us a better toolbox for the future. And last but not least, um, while we remain focused on delivering economic results, our trade policy also has to be more based on values. Uh, we cannot solve all the problems in the world, but we can make a positive con contribution when it comes to, to standards, uh, labor rights, environmental rights, human rights. And that's what we also intend to continue doing in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you.